This is Max Solkowski and Nason Tackett uh, here at Here Technologies in Huntsville, Alabama. One of the biggest questions we get is about routing. In other words, I just bought your Hearback Pro system and I can't figure out how to get the signals into the hub itself. This is not a question you can really answer in one video. So what we decided to do was just take one example and give you an idea of how this works. The thing to remember about our Hearback system or our matrix, or even the, or our Octo system, all the stuff we manufacture, is we're basically a destination. So we're going to react to whatever you send to us, the stems, or the, or if you want to call it the submixes, uh, the tracks, and all that. We will actually react to whatever you have that we actually receive. The biggest, the two biggest uh, formats for us anyway is of course analog, and then Dante. Dante is. Uh, it's very simple to use because you can use it, do it, go with a single cat cable, get things hooked up, and you're just up and running other than the routing. So what we've done is we've tried to get everything together just to make this one uh, example and hopefully it'll give some ideas so you can actually show no matter what you're using, whether it's Waves or AES or anything else. We have a console here that uh, we got from one of our co-workers. It is an Allen & Heath, uh, I think it's an SQ6. Yes. And nice console, he was gracious enough to loan it to us so we could actually do this for you. And it does have a Dante card inside. The basic thing behind routing and getting it there is you've got to have a master. In other words, things have to, the source has to come from somewhere. And so in this example, our source really isn't the mixer, it is our laptop. This is the, if you've ever been to a show like NAMM or whatever and seen us at our booth, this is the little laptop that we use. It's a MacBook Pro and we have stems running from a video and so we can actually get mixes on our mixers so you can literally mix what you're doing. So the actual source for this, rather than a live band in a church situation or you know, a praise band or whatever, is our laptop. The laptop is running through the little dongle, comes into, we have a, there's a, you can't see it, but there is a switch on the floor. So we have all of our Dante devices connected to that switch. And from here, we'll get some close-ups and we'll show you the basics of how to start from the source and run it through. And also get into things like clocking, which is a big deal because even though it sounds simple, it can drive you crazy, especially in a digital setup like this. So here we go. All right, I'm going to start off uh, with my source, which is Ableton. We're, we, we're running uh, uh, stems out of Ableton. And we're using uh, Dante Virtual Sound Card. So I'm going to open that up. And that's just a little, little small window that opens up, lets you choose how many inputs and outputs you want from your computer, um, gives you some latency settings, what uh, interface you're going to use. And so I'm going to go ahead and start that. And what this does is it basically turns my Ethernet port on my uh, laptop into a Dante port. So now I can actually play stems from Ableton and have it route out through uh, Dante. So now that I've got that running, I'm going to minimize that. And then I'm in Ableton, I want to make sure, let's go to preferences and make sure my audio, uh, there's nothing picked as my output device. I want to change that to Dante Virtual Sound Card, 32 in, 32 out. I'm going to make sure my outputs are enabled. All right, so now that I've got that selected, I should be able to hit start, and I've, I've got my source uh, playing, but it's not going to be uh, going anywhere because I need to route that. So I'll let that play, but I'm going to minimize uh, Ableton here, and I'm going to bring up the uh, Dante controller software. This is, is uh, where I'm going to route everything. So at the top, you've got your transmitters, and I can expand that, and at the bottom, or along the left-hand side, you've got receivers. What I'm really looking at is the MacBook Pro, so these 32 here. I want to route those to the Allen and Heat. So right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take 16 stems and send them to the console so that basically it looks like we're mixing a live band, even though it's in the box. Now the only ones that, we, that I actually want to use are 17... through 32, so let me... 
route these real quick. As an example, you might want to just for a second, once you get all that set, maybe route a couple to the front of the hub or to the hub so we can actually see that, yes, you can route directly. directly. And so instead of going from the, the computer to the console, I can do that. I can go computer to directly to the Hearback Pro. So this will just be a direct path. Let's just do. And you'll see that it's going to start reacting. Let's takes go. takes Dante a second. That's one thing about Oops. Dante is whenever you route something and do things, give it a few seconds. Sometimes it just takes a while, and that's okay. So I got two channels. You can see the lights yep. blinking there. That's going straight from the computer out to the hub over Dante. But I'm going to unroute those for now. Okay. Well, the next thing I want to look at. So now I have I've got uh, 16 channels routed from the the computer to the um, console. I want to look at the clock status tab because this is going to let me pick in Dante which one is going to be uh, the uh, master clock. Actually, they've recently renamed that to preferred leader and, and uh, follower. So a leader is what we used to refer to as master and then a follower is slave. So um, right now the hub is the preferred leader. We don't want to do that. We want to make the console the leader. Reason being is because that is where all of your analog input is probably going to connect to, and it's a good idea to go ahead and let that be your, your uh, clock um, master. So let's change preferred leader to the Allen and Heath. And there's another setting here, uh, sync to external. What that means is that it's gonna tell the card that's in the back of the console to use what they refer to as sync to external, it's not really external to the, to the console, it's external to the card. So if you want to use the actual clock that is in the console, then you probably want to go ahead and check sync to external, and that will tell the Dante card to use the console's clock. Otherwise, you could, you could leave that unchecked, but then you need to tell the console to use the clock from the Dante card. You can't have both of them be a, be a master. One's got to be a master, otherwise you're going to get pops and clicks. So um, I'm going to just uh, leave that there for right now. We've got the, the uh, Dante card as the leader, and I'm not going to sync to external. In a little bit, we'll show what that sounds like. There will be some pops and clicks. So I think that's pretty well now I need to go I'm going to go ahead and route from the console to the hub as well let's do that so that's going to be a different tab here we want for the transmitter the Allen and Heath and then for the receiver we want the Hearback Pro and I'm just going to go 1 through 16 and that if you're doing 1 through 16 it's nice if you go up here to the little minus sign you'll see it light up everything in a diagonal and if you uh, hold down the control key then you can click and then it'll, it'll automatically route all those. So next I'm going to show you how to set up routing on this Allen & Heath SQ6 console so that we are bringing in our uh, stems from the computer over Dante and then we're also going to set up some routing to send out to Dante to go to the Hearback Pro hub. So I wiped this mixer uh, kind of to a factory default so that everything's zeroed out. The first thing I want to do is hit the I.O. button and up here at the top, I've got um, I.O. port, and it's got a Dante card, so it actually lights up with Dante uh, there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to route uh, the Dante uh, coming in to the actual fader. So to do that, I'm going to pick over here inputs on the side. It, by default, is on outputs. Then I want to pick I.O. port, and I basically want to route... Now, we're actually sending 17 through 32, on the, on the Dante. So I'm going to go over like this and I want to route 17 to 1. It says patch the input uh, socket. Yes. And actually now you can see um, we've got a light blinking here on channel 1. I'm just going to go ahead and do this to uh, all 16 of these. One more. 
All right, so now we've got uh, some lights here. So we've got signal coming in from Ableton. I also want to go ahead and send out some audio to the hub. Now this actually is a little bit um, uh, more uh, tricky, I guess I would say, because there's not just a one-to-one -one mapping like we did. It really depends on what you need for your setup. Um, because going out, you might want uh, some direct outs, which they call uh, IP uh, direct outputs. Those are basically just outputs from the channels themselves. Then you've also got some mix outputs, and these are basically like your different aux uh, mixes. And so depending on what you're doing, you might kind of want to use a little bit of both of uh, these techniques uh, to route out to your uh, headphone monitoring system. So just to get started, let's plan on the first uh, channel going out being a drum mix. So I'm going to actually go to uh, mix outputs and then I'm going to scroll on down to aux one and actually let's see we want aux one we need to go up here by default it's the local outputs which would be the XLRs in the back I need to go to the IO port again and I want to route aux one to Dante out one so we'll start with that and let's let's try to go ahead and build a, a drum mix real quick to do that now think by default these these are set up as a uh, post fader so I'm just going to kind of go ahead and put everybody not quite to zero I don't want to risk distorting some of these channels are pretty hot put it just a little bit under zero now I'm going to pick mix number one so this is going to let me build uh, a mix going to uh, that first output right now I only have drums on two channels it's a it's a it's a stereo stem so I'm just going to go ahead and turn this up and now we should actually have a light, and we do, and it looks like we're clipping it. So I'm gonna bring that back a little bit. So now we're actually routing uh, audio there. I guess the next thing we wanna do is let's see what that sounds like on the Hearback Pro. Here we are again, we're taking up where we left off. Nason just routed the drums into the Hearback system through the hub from the Allen and Heath, and when we turn up channel one, there's our drum submix. The submix was done in the mixer, okay? One thing, you can submix on the Hearback mixer. It makes your life so much easier if you take all the drum mics, go to one feed, and then come to us that way. Just something to throw in there. Submix on the console uh -huh. rather than the Hearback Pro. Uh, uh, rather than the Hearback Pro. So now that we got drums, let's put the rhythm section together. Let's put bass on number two. All right, to do that, instead of building a submix like I did for the drums, I'm going to use a direct out. Now on the I.O. Uh, page, it's IP direct outputs, and we've got the Dante uh, I.O. port picked up there. So we want to send to uh, number two on the Dante uh, the base, which is on three. So we're going to go three to two. See if that uh, gives you Let's base see. there. We have bass and drums. We have a rhythm section. All right, okay, and it's at the hub. So we're just routing from the console through the hearback system, of course we've got it. We're just doing one-to-one -one mapping for this. So in other words, we've got one going to one, two going to two, just for this demonstration. Okay, let's get some, let's get some lead in there. What about some guitars? Let's put guitars on three. All right, for that I'll do a submix because I've got four different uh, tracks for guitar. So I'm gonna go to uh, mix number two. And up here on the routing, I'm going to go to mix out. And I'm going to send that to three. So that's going to be aux two. And then we want to put it on knob three. Yeah. So let's see. I think that my guitars, or do you have, go ahead and turn three up. Let's see what I send you here. Nothing yet. All right. What is that? Is that guitars? That's guitars. I think this might be my other set of guitars. Let's see. Yep, those are guitars. Okay, so we got our guitars on three. There's our bass guitar. And Vinny in the background on the drums. 
All right, so we got guitars and all this. Just for the purpose of this demonstration, what we're going to do is we're not going to set up the whole thing, just a few. Let's put some vocals with it so it makes some sense here. So I'll, I'll do another mix for that. Do mix number three. And I'm going to send that to knob number four. And notice all of our stems are here. And there you go. All just via routing. Now one thing I wanted to show here is we actually have an imperfection in the audio right now. Let me see if I can hear this. So right now we have a little pop and click. I think actually let's do just vocals. Yeah. So there's a little um, kind of a little snap that happens every every few seconds. What's going on is we have a clocking problem. And the reason why is because right now, when we set up uh, the clocking in Dante, we picked the Allen and Heath to be the leader. So the clock is coming from the Allen and Heath, not particularly from the mixer, but from the Allen and Heath card that's in the mixer. So that's where the clock is coming from for everything Dante. But one thing I need to show you on the console for the setup, it is um, under the audio. So you hit setup and you go to audio and then the audio sync. Right now, the audio clock source is set to internal. The problem with that setting is that means the console is using its own clock. The Dante card is also using its own clock. So they're not running at the same rate and that's why you get a pop and a click. So there's two ways that you can fix this. Um, you need to basically make one of those the master of the other. You can't let them both run in just free range because then you get pops and clicks. And you can actually hear it in the audio right now, a little snap every once in a while. So it honestly doesn't matter which one is. Let's, uh, let's uh, for this example, since it's easier for me to do because I'm right in front of the console, we'll make the Dante card itself the uh, clock master. To do that, we go to audio clock source and I'm going to press that. It gives me the option of internal where it's currently selected, S-Link, which is basically their proprietary snake, and then I-O port. I-O port is what we want because that's where the Dante card is. So if I select this and hit apply, now the console is using clock coming from the Dante card. So the Dante card is generating clock, it's sending it out to Dante, and it's also sending it to the console. So it's coming from one place. That alleviates those pops and clicks. Mm -hmm. The other way that you can do it is you can set this to internal, and then you can go to Dante controller, and you go to the clocking tab, and you select the checkbox on the Allen and Heath that says sync to external. That tells the Dante card to use clock that's coming from the console, that's being generated within the console. So either way is fine, but you have to have one of those set or you get the pops and the clicks. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually go back, let's go back to the IO port. That way we don't have the pops and the, and the clicks. There you go. And that's a question we get a lot with Dante. Uh, it's an incredible system, but it can be tricky when you're first setting it up. Once you have it set up, you're golden. You're gonna be good from that point. Um, the, the routing and all that, once you have it set, make sure you save your routing in your mixer, that type of thing. Another thing we're gonna go through here in just a second is we're gonna turn the console around and show you the other outputs that it has that we will work with and we won't work with. Uh, and it's pretty basic. There are some limitations to a few things, but it's not that bad. Hopefully this hasn't been too confusing, but it's uh, once you do it once, you know, you pretty much have it. Yeah, it's kind of a set and forget. Yeah. What we wanted to do is look at the back of this console, and of course, remember, all consoles are different. Some have features that others don't, and it's just, it's one of those things, you just get what you need, really, at this point. Well, we've been doing this whole thing with Dante, and of course, Alan and Heath, 
They, here's the Dante card, which is what we've been using to get signal to our hear back. On the back of this console, of course, you notice they have, you know, there's all the microphone inputs, all the channel inputs. This guy's a 24. And then right underneath it are some outputs, and there's 14 of those outputs. This is just a golden opportunity right here. Say you don't want to use Dante, you just don't really need that kind of thing. If you get our hub, say, with analog inputs, what you can literally do is take these outputs, assign whatever you want on the console, just like Nason was doing with the Dante. You can assign that, instead of assigning it to the Dante card, you just assign it to these outputs. They could be, it's a submix or just a direct channel or anything you need to do. And you can actually take that and go to our analog cards and achieve the same goal. All right, so that's just another way to do it. There's also other outputs, I believe. There's an A out and a B out. Uh, one thing I want to point out, make sure that the console is going to have enough of what you need. I've had several calls where I ask people, well, what, what's your console got? Well, it's got an AES output, and indeed, this one does, right there. AES EBU output, and it's a single XLR. The thing to know is, via routing in this, in, the, in this Allen and Heath, you can assign two channels to that AES out. The AES actually works at two channels per XLR output. So if you actually had more than this, if you could actually feed 16 channels to the hub, you'd have eight XLRs that would actually get the 16 channels. That's just something to know. It'll work, but you're only going to get two channels. Another thing to notice on the back of the console, these are things we won't work with. A lot of companies have proprietary stuff. There's one here right there. It says network. We will not work with that. We can do just about anything over a cat cable. We can do MADI. You know, we can do uh, waves. We can do Dante, but we cannot work with the manufacturer's proprietary uh, uh, protocol and the same goes with the with the S link here I believe is what that's called yes mm -hmm. those don't work so if your console has ADAT out we can do that for you uh, one thing to mention is ADAT we do not support SMUX 48k okay um, we can do AES at EBU we can do um, MADI, uh, 32 channels of MADI actually to the hub. We can do Dante as we, as we discussed here. The other thing to remember is if you've got a console, and let's say you've got Dante there and you've got to get other things to it, our hub can actually take that Dante card we're using and two analog cards and you can use them at the same time. Say you've got it just for whatever reasons, you're routing some stuff to video and all and you just don't have the right amount of outputs, you can literally have Dante for half your channels and analog outs via these sub outs here and use them at the same time to get 32 channels which is our, the maximum on one hub. So there's, a, there's so many different ways to get from the band through the console, which is where the routing's done. The console is the key out to the destination, in this case, which is just us. And we hope this little demonstration has helped a bit. Uh, you know, please feel free to call us with any questions. I will say that the, the companies out there, like Allen and Heath or Studio Master or, you know, any of them, any of the big ones out there and all they got great customer service and they're more than willing to help you um, <laughs> I can let Nason. on this is the first time he's ever seen this mixer and he managed to route everything through it it's not that bad they probably know all the shortcuts and but we'll help as much as we can we're just not quite as familiar with every console out there but right and we, it doesn't have to be a console if you're coming out of pro tools yeah. if you're going from a pro tools i don't know to a focus right or whatever whatever uh, again they've got incredible customer service we i wish we had all that gear here so that we could just play with it all day and i'm afraid that you know the powers that be won't let us do that so We'll do all we can to help, but uh, the other the companies are out there, and they can definitely get you through it. And we hope this has helped. Um, we're going to have other videos showing other things. Um, this is Nason Tackett and Max Solkowski at Here Technologies. Take care.